Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be looking at a signal bus system. This is going to allow us to make our code more manageable and scalable. Let me close the little game that I have going here and let's take a look at the code. Inside my player object, I have a simple collision event for any time that it encounters my collectible object. Inside this event, we're going to try and look for the score object. Once we find the score object, we'll check to see if the instance exists. And if it does exist, then we'll finally ask for a function to run to increase the score. At the very end of this function, we'll just simply remove that collectible object. So as you can see, there's really nothing happening. This is pretty simple. But the one problem is that our player object now relies on the score object. If we want to add more objects, we're going to have to either add a bunch more code or start looking at parent-child relationships. With the signal bus, we don't need to do that. We can use one method and send out a message and any instance that wants to listen to that message can perform its own action. So before we get into coding this, let me explain what a signal bus actually does. This design allows us to broadcast messages to any object or instance that is listening for them. This means that we can decouple our code and make it more modular and also easier to scale. For instance, we can broadcast a message for jump and any instances that are listening for that message can perform their own actions. This also means that we can add more objects that listen for the jump message without having to change our original code. This is a great way to make our code more maintainable and easier to scale. You can find this full library and any other source code in the description below, or you can actually find a full write-up on my Patreon page. Both are found in the description. Now with that out of the way, let's get back to the code. Inside my object initialization, I'm going to initialize a signal bus as a global variable. This is just so I can access it all throughout my game. Once we have defined our global variable, we're able to access all of the functions that that specific library is going to give us. These functions are once, on, emit, and off. I won't go into every single function, but you can check out the code. However, let's open up our player event and let's comment out the current code that we have for the score instance. Instead, what we're going to do is add a function for this signal bus. We're going to emit a message and think of this as broadcasting a message out to all objects. Only the objects that are listening for it will pick it up and interact. So for this message, we're going to call it add score. The second parameter is a data value. This means that we can pass in a single value or we can pass in an array or my favorite, which is a struct that lets us name the values and the variables. Now with this done, every time that we collect our object, we're going to be sending this message out to our bus system. We can have as many objects as we want listening for this message and they'll all perform an action accordingly. But for this example, we're going to keep it very simple and let's just add the score to the actual score object. We'll open up the score object and in the create event, we need to ask it to listen for that particular message. Let's access the signal bus using the global variable and the function that we want to call is going to be the on function. This function will accept the data that we passed in through the broadcast message. The other thing that we need to have at the end is going to be the ID of the instance. This is only in case the instance gets destroyed or removed, we'll automatically remove the listener from our bus system. Now back to the function, inside we're going to add the value that we passed in to the score variable. Remember, because I passed in a struct, I can access that specific data value or key by the actual name. Now, if we run our game again, you can see that once again, we're updating the score. Everything is happening as before, except the main purpose here is we've decoupled one of our components. The player object now no longer actually needs the object score to be available. Let's do one more example. Let's say if our score is bigger than 10, then we want to change the color of the collectible objects. Inside the object score, any time that we have a score bigger than 10, we'll emit a new message. Now, just like before, we can tell any object or instance to listen for this message. But for this particular case, let's open up the object collectible and we'll go to the create event for this instance. We need to tell our code to listen, so we'll use the on function. 
and the data that we passed in, we can basically ignore. Inside, all we'll do is simply change the image blend to a random color value. Let's run our game again and collect 10 items here. Now, one thing I'll also mention that once we have our listener running, you can easily switch it off using the off function. The other useful function that you may find is the once function. This will run an event once and only once. So even if you have it broadcasting in a step event, because it only runs once, it won't run every single time. And with that, that's it for the video. I hope you learned something and I hope you can see the power of a single bus. Again, you can check out the code and the write-up on Patreon and in the description below. Thanks again. If you like what you saw, please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.